Hello and welcome to The Lucky Roll, an eclectic channel for eclectic games. And today we're going to be looking at and playing Fallout, the board game. Now, this is a game for one to four players, but I'll be doing the solo version of it. And the reason I'm doing the solo version of it is because of the current pandemic crisis that is gripping the globe. Unfortunately, uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic crisis, myself and James aren't able to collaborate like we normally do. Now, the game we decided to pick, or well, the game I decided to pick and play, is Fallout the Board Game. Mainly because it's one of my favourite franchises in the world, but also it's um, kind of apt given the whole post-apocalyptic setting. Now, the character I've decided to play is the Vault Dweller. Um, the reason I thought I would pick him is because I'm playing the Capital Wasteland scenario. So... Most people's introduction to the game, the actual computer game now, would have been Fallout 3. Uh, and I thought, why not? Normally I would play as an NCR Ranger in a solo play, but it didn't seem apt to have an NCR Ranger on the other side of the, uh, the United States traipsing around the DC capital wasteland. Now, this is the expanded edition, so this is going to include the new California expansion. Uh, set, which means that there's extra tiles, that there's um, extra loot, there's extra story cards, there's um, extra bad guys, and extra goodies, and all around just extra good stuff. Um, I won't explain the game because this game, this is this is not a tutorial. This is just me playing the game, having a bit of fun, and sharing my experience with you. Um, I will stick to the rules, and if I lose the game, I lose the game. However, I do want to kind of play through the story narrative. So even if I lose, I'll probably just keep playing regardless. Normally what happens in this game is you have a star and a shield, which are two icons like this, and they travel down the actual track. Uh, if whichever faction, be it star or shield, gets onto the end of the track, and you happen to be aligned with that faction, then you win the game. If that's not the case, then you lose the game. Regardless, I'll play it, and if I lose, I will let you know. However, I just want to play through the story and have a fallout, a complete fallout experience in one kind of nice little evening. So we're going to start with the Capital Wasteland. We've picked the uh, Vault Dweller, and I'm going to read the starting scenario card, which says, Welcome to the Capital Wasteland. The mountains around you shake suddenly, fire and rubble spewing violently into the sky. Eyes wide, you watch as a fleet of vertebrates scrambles from its peak to clear the violent blasts. The straggler of the group begins to emit a trail of smoke as the rest disappear over the eastern horizon, then abruptly drops out of sight with a dull explosion that echoes up from the capital wasteland. Now we have two choices. We can check for survivors, or we can call on to Megaton and find out what the hell just happened. Now, if we check for survivors, we will advance the path for the Enclave. Now, I don't like the Enclave, they happen to be the bad guys. And if we ask in Megaton what's happened, we advance the path of the Brotherhood of Steel. Now, what makes this game interesting, however, is that your faction can be randomly assigned to you. So, this card will probably determine what side I pick. And it's the shield security. So. I get an extra point of influence for every space that shield has advanced further than star. So this card has pretty much dictated my loyalty from the start, which is unfortunately for the Enclave. So on my turn, I have two actions per go. I can move, I can attack, I can quest, I can explore, and I can camp. Now. I am currently here. Since my faction is obviously the shield, I might as well go and check out what's going on with the vertebrates. So my first action is to move, and my second action is to explore this tile. So the tile is just a big, dead old wasteland. No hiccups, no drama, no nothing of the sort. Now of course, there's a couple little things I forgot to add in. I have one extra stat, I have a luck stat, which is what I start with, and would you believe it, I've drawn another luck one, which is actually quite unlucky because I'm not allowed to start the two stats at the same. Normally you get a perk, but in this case I'll just have to do the intelligent thing, which is intelligence, 
and use that as my stat. Now, another thing I forgot to bring in is that there are starting monsters. So we have here a starting bad guy. We have here a starting kind of... It has the death claw shape on it, but it's a, it's a horrible monster. And we have up here a starting super mutant type. Now, these are important because the way the timing is done in this game is you draw the top of the agenda deck, you ignore all the stuff up here, and you simply move the icons down here. So a star, which is here, which would represent the Brotherhood of Steel, will take a step towards me. And we also have the Death Claw icon, which means that this monster wakes up. And the monster, of course, is a Yaogwai, uh, a bear. Now, I know that everyone calls it a Yaogwai, but I always kind of thought, was it called that because of Yogi Bear? the uh, old cartoon. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, but it's just the uh, the child of me always thinks of that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was a singular turn. So every time I move, I'll be drawing an agenda card and going accordingly. So I'll be moving once, two. So that was my first action. And my second action is to explore again. Now, unfortunately, we have rough terrain here. We have rough terrain here and we have another bug monster that has just appeared. So he's still asleep, thank God. But um, terrain, rough terrain will cost me two movement points to go through, so I might just circumnavigate it. So the next agenda card that we draw up will have the bug symbol, of course. So that means that this little buzzer wakes up and he is a Stingwing. Now, unfortunately, he's level two and he has no loot. So I have no real intention of battling this guy if I can avoid it. So what I'll do is I'll explore this tile, because I'm next to it. And this happens to be the Red Rocket Station, which has a wasteland, or a kind of a, a well, I won't say, kind of a wasteland section that I can explore and quest on. And it has, unfortunately, bad guys. So we'll set up the bad guys and I think for the sake of it we'll have a, a little old mosey down to the red rocket station. So I can actually go here to this piece and it's connected there so I'm straight right into the red rocket station. Now we draw the next card which has the bad guys and the bugs. So these bad guys activate and it's a regulator and he has a gun symbol, so if he activates again, he will shoot me. So we also have a bug. And what happens here when the bug is activated is it moves towards you. So I already have bad guys closing in on me, and we have bad guys down here as well near the tower, which is Raider Scum. So they just wake up, and this agenda card goes here. Now as I'm on the Red Rocket Station, I might as well quest. And what you do here is you basically you take a card from the Wasteland deck, turn it around and you're faced with a choice. A valuable asset hangs from the ceiling of a large room. Debris and green light surround it. Huh. You're pretty sure this is some sort of trap. So I flip the top caps card face up, which is Jet. Uh, so I have three choices. I think I could get in and out quickly enough, you think. So I need a score of four. And I have a reroll with agility and luck, so I do have luck. Uh, I could send someone else for it, a companion. I don't have a companion. Or I could search a different room. So a trap is a trap is a trap. Not worth it. Now, given that it's only Jet, I don't think I'll bother. Because an agility score of 4 is bad. And uh, traps being traps, I think I'll search a different room. So what I do is I check this one. I discard the special caps card, so this goes away into the discard pile underneath it. And I loot times the wasteland. Now it's the red rocket station, so it's loot two. So I just basically get two loot cards for my trouble, which is not so bad. I think two loot cards instead of the um, Two loot cards instead of the actual jet drugs is a better buy for me. So the two loot cards we have is Preston Garvey. So we have a companion. Um, and there doesn't seem to be any requirements except for 
So you might have to be idolized. I don't think I'm idolized. And water, which during your turn you may discard this card to recover five hit points, then suffer one radiation damage. Now I'll just double check that Preston Garvey is someone I can um, actually have. I just need to re-familiarize myself with the action. So, no, he's just a companion. So no, I think I can just take Preston Garvey as a companion. So I can basically circumnavigate difficult terrain with him, which is handy enough. Um, how do I put it? I quite liked the character initially and in followed four until uh, I rescued a lot of settlements and then he just became like a mother hen nagging you all the time asking you saying there's another settlement in trouble will you help it there's another settlement in trouble will you help it and just basically wrecked your head now you can actually do the same action twice in the same spot so I think it's worth my while to see what other loot I can get so I'm going to quest in the wasteland section again so the next one is radiation permeates the wasteland here raiders seem to stay away from it and you drool at the thought of the unspoiled riches it might hold. The deeper you go, however, the more dangerous it will be. So I have a choice. I can play it safe in the outskirts. I can explore some of the moderately irradiated areas. Or I can head to where the radiation is the most deadly. The best stuff will be there. Hmm. Now, the... What is the best thing to do? Play it safe in the outskirts, explore some of the moderately radiated areas, or head to where the radiation is best. Now, I am quite weak. I have no radiation damage, of course, but um, I'd say one, two, three, we'll go middle, two. So two is explore some of the moderately irradiated areas. You find a trove of objects hidden by someone who expired shortly thereafter, whose body is lying several feet away. I suffer two radiation damage, uh, and I lose times the wasteland, which is two. So I lose times two. So that's two more loot cards, and we have guns and bullets item magazine. When you camp, if you do not have A, you may discard this card to gain two experience points. And bottle cap mine item trap. During a turn, exhaust to place an unused quest mark in your space and on this card. After enemy is activated, if at least one enemy moved into the marked space, kill each enemy in that space, then discard this card. This card cannot unexhaust. Interesting. So, you have a one-use bottle cap mine. Now, unfortunately, I've taken my two goes, so the agenda card sets what happens next, and this is the star and super mutants. So the star will move one space forward and the super mutants will wake up. Now the super mutants are nasty fellas because strength three, headshot and arms and it does come with loot but also it has a ranged attack. Now unfortunately there's no way around that regulator uh, unless I decide to get radiated. Um, now, we've already been radiated. I don't really want to get into combat, but I feel like I have no choice. So I'm going to move one, and I'm going to go into combat with the regulator. Now, according to the symbol, I need to target him on the legs or the chest, and I need to score two. So what you do is you roll these die, and depending on what symbol you get, you score a hit. So, for example, if I rolled this dice with a headshot it wouldn't count so what I'm looking for is legs and chest times two so I have one chest and I have one legs so fortunately I have killed the bad guy but he has also scored two hits on me now this is the kind of there's several functions to the die to these die in some cases when I'm doing a test I'll be wanting the actual little dots but in combat the little dots are a bad thing so in this case he's done two damage to me fortunately my vault suit negates one point of damage so I only suffer one damage so I'm down to 15 hit points however I do kill the poor regulator so he's been deregulated 
Hooray for free market economy. And we put down another face down um, bad guy icon. And I lose two because he was a level two character. So the two loot cards I have is Hancock, where I can exhaust to move an enemy within two spaces of you into your space and fight it. If that enemy is not killed during that fight, discard this card. Uh, or Marcus. Oof, God, plenty of companions. Uh, during a test that uses strength, endurance, or intelligence, exhaust to add one hit. If you at least three special tokens, keep this companion when it unexhausts. Now, I think Marcus happens to be a fantastic character. Uh, he was in, I believe, two of the Fallout games. He was in Fallout 2. He was one of the, the main characters in that. And he was a fantastic companion. Oh, he just kind of slaughtered everything left, right, and center. And he was the sheriff of um, a town in Fallout, New Vegas. And although he couldn't be a companion in that one, he was certainly a quest giver. Uh, he was voiced by Michael Dorn, which I remember as a Star Trek, huge Star Trek fan at the time. I was delighted with it. So I'm sorry, Preston. Uh, I don't want to help your settlements. I'm going to stick with Marcus because Marcus just kicks ass and Michael Dorn is, you know, just should be just kind of embalmed in amber and kept for posterity because he's just brilliant. So we'll keep Marcus. And that was the end of our turn. So the agenda card comes up next is shield now there's no shield icon here the bug activates so it buzzes here now there's fortunately still a line between me and it there's no other bugs in play and a robot activates now there's no robots in play either so fortunately that card could have been a lot worse and it wasn't so for my next turn i'm going to explore here and see what we have we have radiation hoffman farm and another bug monster so we'll place the bug monster down and I could go one, two to Hoffman Farm and avoid the radiation or I could go through the radiation. Now I'm not going to be able to quest and activate that thing yet. So I might as well avoid the radiation while I can. So I'll go one, two onto Hoffman Farm and I'll quest the next time. So. That was my explore action and my move action, so my turn, would you believe it, is over. Back to this, we have shield, there's no shield icons. Unfortunately, the death cloth symbol activates, so the bear takes a nice little step towards me, and fortunately, there's no robots in play, so that was the end of that agenda card. Now, I could quest, we have, this indicates the end of the roll, so I do have four turns to get to the vertebrate and activate it. The reason I'm doing so is that if these two symbols are drawn together, they'll advance down together and that is a bad thing for me. However, if in the solo play only one symbol is down, the other one just catches it up. So it does give you a little bit more game time. So I think for the sake of it, I will quest in Hoffman Farm because it might give me a chance to shop and the bottle cap mine is not so good to me and um, yeah I'll I'll quest I'll shop and I might sell my guns and bullets actually you know what I'll do first is I'll quest I'll actually camp first so what happens when you camp is I think you miss one turn or two turns just give me two seconds gents so I believe it's just one action. So I'm going to camp, which means this is rested. Now, I don't have the A card, so I'm going to discard this and get two XP. So that means one, two. So if I get another XP, I will level up. And actually, I need to mulligan that because I forgot. I leveled up with the killing the bad guy. I leveled up two points. So that would be one. And I get to draw another little trait. I should have I should have gone up to XP when I killed the regulator and I've gone up to XP by using the skill magazine and the skill I've drawn is luck or perception. Now I think I will stick with perception because I want to level my character up. So 
That was one action. The second action, of course, is going to check out Hoffman Farm. So what I do is I draw the settlement card and we have 244. Now this is interesting. Um, these are special cards that are thrown in from the expansion set that will set the game off in different directions. So I just happen to look up by drawing one. You feel as though you need a new perspective on life and you look to the people of the wasteland to provide it for you. Perhaps by involving yourself in their problems, you'll find yours will feel less insurmountable. So I can work for others to better myself or offer my services to those who can pay. Now, given that we seem to be helping the Enclave, I suppose I'll go for the more selfish choice. So I'll offer my services to those who can pay. A few caps come your way just for hearing out a potential client. I get one cap. Yay, I'm rich. Uh, I stage 226 and this goes into the trash. So 226 will come from the story cards here. So I'll just take it out and the card in play is the box car children. So a group of orphans is in need of charity. I stage 230. Each objective may be completed only once. Place a quest marker on each objective that has been completed. When all objectives that have been completed, trash this card. So in order to explain that a little bit better, I'll get 230, which is Tabula Rasa. Bereft of moral guidance, the boxcar children, the orphans, are learning about the complexities that come with living life as a citizen of the wasteland. Young and impressionable is up to the wasteland's inhabitants to raise them properly. So you happen to know just the person best qualified to shape these malleable young minds. You. So what you do is you encounter either wastelands or settlements after completing objectives on the boxcar children until you have educated the orphans. So basically uh, I have to do three different things here but I'll get an agenda card for doing so. I can give them weapons, I can give them money and I can give them um, drugs. Now depending on how the actual card or scenario or whatnot I'll either put a star or a shield on it. So depending on how well or badly you do will educate these particular children. You'll see as I play the game, I'm going to put them here down next to the actual uh, Capital Wasteland card because these that are staged aspects and of course the boxcar orphans are one of these unexplored tiles. So that was my first action was the camp. The second action was the quest. So now it's the monster's turn and what is activated is the skulls. So the bad guys here wake up and it is a bounty hunter. No doubt kind of sent by the regulators, they get me. And we have Raider Scum, of course, which will take a step towards me. And this goes back here. Now, my turn again. So I think what I'll do is I'll go one, two, and I will explore this tile, which will be my second action. And it's the Super Duper Mart. And we have, of course, Super Mutants to play. Now I'm going to put the Vertibird here so I can get to it as quick as possible and simply quest it and drive the narrative forward. Now, here's our Super Mutant token. That goes up here. And it goes back to the game. So the next one is Super Mutants, of course. I've, the Vertibird probably woke them up. So this Super Mutant icon activates, which is... Oh, God almighty, a super mutant behemoth. Of course it is. So he wakes up and we have this super mutant will take a step towards me. Now, back to me. Uh, given that I've got a behemoth breathing down my neck, I think I will go and check the vertebrate for survivor quicker rather than later. So if I go back to the original card here, it says quest on the wreck. So what I do is I place a shield on Project Purity, which means the Enclave is in play. Uh, I loot by two. I stage 45 and 101 and I add 46 to the pile. Now this also means that the shield icon goes forward one. So instead of being even, the shield, shield can't talk anymore, the shield icon moves forward one, so the Enclave agenda is going well. 
So let's have a look at our loot first. The goodies we've gotten are the Unstoppables item magazine. So when you camp, if you do not have endurance, which I don't, you may discard this card to gain two XP. Handy. And the next one is Raider Armor. During a fight with an enemy that has range, this shield is one. So if I'm fighting an enemy that has a ranged weapon, I basically have an extra shield point. Now, I will take that. It's not the best suit of armor, but um, it's better than nothing. So that was my two actions. I moved and I quested. Now, hopefully, it's the agenda card, and hopefully we don't activate the suit mutant. Otherwise, I've got a big behemoth that's going to squish me. And it's the star and robot. So the star will move forward one space towards me and there's no robots in play so this can go back to the deck now what's the phrase least said soon as mended I think I will get the heck out of dodge 